So, good afternoon friends. I am Dr. K. Gopagumar. I retired from Kerala University after 37 years of service. I did my BA and MA in English language and literature from Kerala University. I also took my PhD from Kerala University under the guidance of the late Dr. K. Ayyapapanigar. And I coordinated a certificate program for distance education for about 16 years. I also prepared the courseware for a certificate program in communicative English which includes an audio cassette. So, these are my credentials. All right. In our last class, we saw word accent, that is in other words, how to accent individual words. And today, we shall see sentence stress. That is, how to accent words in sentences. In other words, how to accent words when we speak or in other words, how to speak English with proper accents. All right. As all of us know, when we speak, we stress only the content words. I have, I have already told you what are content words. I do not know whether you remember, you remember what are content words? Words having more or less independent meaning, such words are called content words. And can you mention just a few? Yes, nouns. verbs, adjectives, adverbs, demonstratives, and Christian words. So, these are the words we stress when we speak. It means we do not stress the structure words. And what are structure words? What are structure words? Words are having only grammatical function. And can you mention a few structure words, that is articles, conjunctions and auxiliaries, a u x i l i a r i e s, articles, conjunctions, prepositions and auxiliaries are the structure words. So, when we speak, we stress only the conan words. That is, we do not stress the structure words. It means, we use the weak forms of structure words. And what does it mean? Structure words have both strong forms and weak forms. The strong and weak forms of structure words, we shall see after some time. So, when we speak, that is in speech, normally we stress the conan words. However, what ultimately decides the sentence stress is the meaning and rhythm of the sentence. 
So, it is the meaning and rhythm of the sentence that ultimately decides sentence stress. So, it goes without saying that there is a direct relationship between meaning and stress. There is a one to one correspondence between meaning and stress. You know, consider for example, a sentence like this. See, we can give different meanings to the same sentence by stressing words differently. That is, I can do it, I not you, I am stressing I, I can do it. Now, I am stressing the second word, I can do it, I can, I am able to do it. Now, I am stressing the next word, I can do it, I can do not merely say, I can do it. Then I am stressing the final word, I can do it, this particular thing I can do. See how the meaning changes, when we, when we change, when we stress words differently. So, that is why I said, it is meaning and rhythm that ultimately decides sentence stress. And what is rhythm? We shall see when we work out a few sentences. Now, before we move on to work out a few sentences, let us see the strong and weak forms of some of the important structure words. First, we shall see the various forms of the definite article T H E. Do you know how many form this article has got? Two? No. We are familiar only with the two forms. That is the two weak forms, the and the. So, it has got two weak forms and one strong form also, that is the. So, the article has got three forms, one strong form that is the and two weak forms the and the. And when do we use the strong form? When we refer to a definite object or thing or for contrast or emphasis, we use the strong form the. This is the man who saved the child. This is the eagle which flew round the temple. This is the place to eat. This is not a solution, but the solution. See, in context like this, we use the strong form. That is, when we refer to a definite object or when we have it to emphasize or when we have it to contrast, we use the strong form. This is not a place, but the place. This is not a solution, but the solution. Okay. Now, where do we use the weak forms the and the? That is before vowels that is before words beginning with vowels, we use the, the ink pot we say, the eagle. So, before vowels that is before words beginning with vowels, we use the weak form. And where do we use the form the before consonants that is the man, the boy we say. Okay. So, before vowels, we use the weak form the and before consonants we use the weak form the and you know these are minute details this is how you have to fine tune your speech very subtle things but you know this is how you have to fine tune i have just told you this is how you have to fine tune your speech 
and initially you have to be a little conscious. After some time, things will come to you quite naturally, spontaneously. Okay? So, this is about the definite article TH E. Three forms the, the, and the. Before vowels, we use the, before consonants, the. And when we refer to a definite object or thing, or for contrast, and when we have to emphasize, we use the strong form the. Now, we shall see the strong and weak forms of some of the auxiliaries whose W A S strong form is was weak form is was W E R E it's where weak form is were were we were playing we say okay was and was were were now the preposition TO Again, can you tell me how many forms this preposition has got? As in the case of the definite article THE, this preposition has also got three forms. One strong form that is two and two weak forms two and two. Again, where do we use the strong form? Again for contrast. For example, the letter is to him and not from him. Then, this is the book I refer to. So, here we use the strong form to. Then, the two weak forms to and to. As in the case of the definite article the, to we use before vowels. That is, before words beginning with vowels, we use to. You know, to examine, we say, to examine. Then, to the weak form before consonants. I want to go, want to write. So, to before ovals and to before consonants. So, these are the three forms of to. One strong form, that is to, and two weak forms, to and to. So, the weak forms of other structure words we shall see when we work out sentences. Now, shall we work out a few sentences? All right. First sentence. So, meet me at 10. Can you tell me which are the content words? And we stress only the content words, which are the words to be stressed? Content words here meet and 10, these are the content words. And we stress only the content words. And stress the words meet me at 10. And how do we say the sentence? Meet me at 10. Meet me at 10. 
Has the sentence got a rhythm in your rhythm? Say the sentence loudly. Meet me at 10. Meet me at 10. Meet me at 10. Yes, that is a rhythm. So, this is what I told you, it is meaning and rhythm that ultimately decides certain stress. So, please transcribe. Normally, we do not stress words. Because as I have told you in my previous class, Malayalam is not a stress timed language, whereas English is a stress timed language. So, how do we say meet me at 10? Meet me at 10. Okay? Another sentence, so which are the words to be stress, common words, which are the words to be stress, wait and goes wait and goes. Again, perhaps you remember what I told you, we can give different meanings to the same sentence by stressing words differently. And we can give special meanings to the sentence by stressing words differently, in different way, in a different way. For example, normally, so you should see how we read a sentence in the normal context. And how do we read the sentence? Wait till he goes. Wait till he goes. So, these are the words to be stressed. Wait till he goes. In special context, of course, we can say wait till he goes. That is a special meaning. Normally, we do not say like that. Wait till he goes. Wait till he goes. So, please try to transcribe, wait till he this is the normal form, normal form. These are the weak forms. We can use any one of these, either E or E or E. This way also we can write wait till, wait till, wait till he gives. So, try to read the sentence with proper accent, wait till he goes, wait till he goes, wait till he goes. So, words be stress here, common words will not and no. And how do we read the sentence, say the sentence, I want to know, I want to know. We have a different rhythm here. I to the weak form to nail. This way also you can do transcribe. So, how do we say? I want to know, I want to know. We have used the weak form to 
I want to know. Try all of you. I want to know. I want to know. Okay. Fourth sentence. So he had to go based on meaning and scorned words one go, then he had to go. So, we have to stress had also, because that is the meaning, he had to go, had to go. Okay? Please transcribe, he had to, again the weak form, he had to go. And we say the sentence, he had to go, he had to go, all right. Just a few more sentences, fifth one. So, the words we stress, yes, think and find and say the sentence stressing these two words, I think it will be fine, I think it will be fine, think it will be fine. So, please transcribe, I think It will be, it will be fine. I think it will be fine. Okay. So, this is how we say the sentence. I think all of you please try. I think it will be fine. I think it will be fine. Okay. Next sentence, yes, paper and pen. Now, the words we stress, I am looking for paper and pen exactly, these are the words to be stressed. Now, say the sentence, I am looking for paper and pen, I am looking for paper and pen, I am, I am looking for paper, paper and pen. You remember, this is the linking R, which we retain when R is followed by a vowel. And we say the sentence as, I am looking for paper and pen. I am looking for paper and pen. Say the sentence, I am looking for paper and pen. Okay. Just one more sentence. Turn to the right at end of yes turn to the right at T H E end of T H E street and the words we stress words we stress Try please, turn, turn, right, end, street. These are the words. So, turn, right, 
ends the street. So, how do we read it? Please transcribe. Turn, you see the various forms of the, turn t again, big form t, turn to the right at d, why? Because that is followed by a vowel, a word beginning with a vowel. So, d, turn to the right at the end of the street, again, the big form the, because that is followed by a consonant. So, how do we say the sentence? Please try. Turn to the right at the end of the street. Turn, turn to the right at the end of the street. Okay? So, the various forms of THE should come to you naturally. Till then, you should practice this. This is how you have to fine tune your speech. Okay? More sentences you should work out at home. Okay? And since we do not have much time, you know, with this we shall end this section. Okay? So, to sum up, so, in speech or when we speak, you know what are the words we stress? We stress the content words. And do we stress the structure words? No, we do not stress the structure words. It means we use the weak forms of structure words. That is a point you have to keep in mind when you speak English. That is, Take care to stress all the content words and also to use, take care to use the weak forms of structure words. Okay? So, that will do with regard to sentence stress. Now, we shall move on to our next area that is intonation. First, we have to see what is intonation, then the various tones in English and also the contrast where we have to use these tones. Well, coming to intonation, can you guess the meaning? Has this got anything to do with the tone or pitch? Yes, intonation. So, it has something to do with the tone or pitch and what is tone or pitch? High pitch, low pitch we say. What is tone or pitch? That is the highness or lowness of sound determined by the frequency of vibration on the occal cords. Lowness or highness of sound. That is what we mean by tone or pitch. And then what is intonation? See, as you know, when we speak, we regularly change our tone, that is, we never speak in the same tone, that is, we never speak in a monotone. That is, at times the pitch will rise, at the times it will fall or remain level. This change of pitch of voice or variation in the pitch of the voice is called intonation. Is it clear? That is variation in the pitch of the voice or change of pitch of voice 
or variation in the pitch of the voice. Or we can say the pitch pattern. is called intonation. In other words, we can say intonation is the melody of speech. This is something that makes our speech melodious. Okay, this intonation is the melody of speech. And as you know, this is the most difficult aspect of a language to master. I have simplified things for you and what I am going to give you is a simplified version. So, there are four major tones or pitches in English, four major tones. First comes fall, the falling tone, second rise, the rising tone. Third comes fall rise and fourth rise fall. These are the four major tones in English fall, rise, fall rise, and rise fall. Okay? Now, we shall see more about each of these tones and also the contours where we use this tone fall. This is how we represent the tone. That is by a slant. This slant represents the fall falling tone. Okay? Now, we shall see the contours in which we use this tone. So, how did you come today? I came by bus. I came by bus, bus that is the falling tone. See, I want a reply, did you write, did you write it, I want a reply. Then again, Suppose this is a science class, I am demonstrating an experiment and this is a test tube containing zinc, this is another test tube containing sulfuric acid S2SO4, I am pouring this sulfuric acid into the test tube containing zinc, chemical reaction you know takes place and then I, I ask the class, I am asking the class, what did you see? What did you see? See, what did you see? Another contest, shut the door. Shut the door. That is an order, an angry order, shut the door. Another context, what a pity, what a pity that is suggesting involvement. I also sympathize with the person, what a pity. So, these are the contours where we use the falling tone. Now, let us examine each of these sentences. I came by bus, I came by train, 
I come from a village. See, I came by bus. What kind of sentence is this? Statement, an ordinary statement without any implication. And these two sentences, what kind of sentences? Both are questions. What kind of questions? The first one, yes, no question. Second one, W H question, yes, no, and W H question. So, ordinary statements. Yes, no question and W H question that is yes, no question and W H question asked in a neutral way. This is not how we ask questions, how you put the questions. This is not the way we put these questions. So, for ordinary statements without any implication for yes no and wh questions asked in a neutral way and third sentence what kind of sentence shut the door an imperative sentence that is an order with anchor root latest third shut the door so an imperative an order with anchor an angry order and fourth one what a pity an exclamation suggesting involvement we use the following tone is it clear so i shall repeat which are the contours where we use this tone for ordinary statements without any implication Yes, no, and W H questions asked in a warm, asked in a neutral way, and then angry others, imperatives with anger, and you know exclamations suggesting involvement. We use this tone. Now, please use the tone. So, how did you come today? How did you come today? I came by train. I came by bus bus the tone falls it is only now you know speech becomes complete only with the right tone i came by bus i came by train then did you write i have already told you this is not how we have to put a yes, no question, but in a neutral way, this is how. Did you write? I want a reply. Did you write? So, is yes, no question asked in a neutral way. Now, W H question again asked in a neutral way. What did you see? What did you see? What did you see? Again, W H question asked in a neutral way. So, questions yes, no and w h asked in a neutral way we use this tone. Then imperatives that is for angry order shut the door we say, shut the window, get out we say, get out, go out we say, shut the door, go out you know. Here also we use the following tone, then exclamation suggesting involvement what a pity what a pity. So, these are the contexts where we use the following tone, following tone. Please all of you please try the tone. All right. Now, to the second tone that is rise and this is how we represent the tone a slant, slanted this way, rise. Again the context, the 
when I came, when I came, that is an incomplete utterance. When I came, there was none. There was none, again incomplete, when I came. So, for an incomplete utterance, we use this tone. Similarly, you see when we count 1, 2, 3, see 1, 2, Three, if we use this tone, the rising tone, the listener will think that the next, you know, the next number will follow. One means next second will follow. That's that's the meaning conveyed by this tone. One, two, three, and four. Four means it's over. One, two, three. So, rise means items will follow, the next will follow, it is not complete, not at all, that is the meaning. Whereas, when we use the fall, that means it is over. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4, got it? So, that is the tone, that is the rising tone. So, for an incomplete utterance, we use the tone. Then, Christians, the same question, did you write, did you write, did all of you write, did you write? You know this is how a question has to be put that is in a warm friendly way. The other was a neutral question, did you write, see, did you write, a neutral question, did you write, did you write, did all of you write, did all of you write, did you write. So, that becomes a warm friendly question, yes no question, again. What did you see? What did you see there? What did you see? Again, a WH question asked in a warm, friendly way. This is how normally we put yes, no, and WH questions. Okay? So, did you write? What did you see? When did you come? When did you come? Instead of the rising tone, if you use the fall, again you see that will become, the questions will become neutral. That is, did you rise? What did you see? When did you come? Like that. Okay? So, for yes, no, the first contest where we use incomplete utterance, incomplete utterances. So, questions yes, no, and W H questions asked in a warm friendly way, warm friendly way. Now, third contest, same sentence with, with a rising tone. Then, see, use the tone and say the sentence, shut the door, shut the door, then it will become a polite request. Shut the door, will you please shut the door, shut the door. See, you say fall, shut the door, that becomes an angry order, shut the door, here, shut the door, 
pass the paper, sit there, sit there, okay. get me a glass of water, glass of water. So, when we use this tone, these imperatives will become, you know, these orders will become, you know, requests, polite requests and pleasant invitations. Okay. So, these are the contexts where we use the rising tone. First one, when I came, when I came, there was none, when I came. So, for incomplete utterances, two, for yes, no and w h questions asked in a warm friendly way and for polite requests and pleasant invitations, we use the tone we use the rising tone. Okay. What is important is that you should practice the practice the tone. Now, the third tone fall rise. Fall rise and this is how we represent the tone. First, the tone falls and then it rises, fall rise. This is how we represent the tone. First it falls and then rises, fall rise. The contest. Did you get the meaning? I saw you at the theater. You said you had to study. That is we should get this meaning, we should get the meaning. But you shall not say this part, this part you shall not say, but we should get the meaning from the tone. Can you use the tone? Can you use the tone? Take it as a statement, I saw you at the theater, fall, I saw you at the theater. That will become an ordinary statement, I saw you at the theater. Then if you want to make it a question, you can use a rise and ask, I saw you at the theater then that will become a question. But here, you have a different meaning. What is given in bracket, have you seen? You said you had to study, but I saw you, what is the tone? I saw you at the theatre. Did you get the tone? I saw you at the theatre. So, we get this meaning. You said you had to study, but I saw you at the theatre. And this is the tone fall rise. I saw you at the theater. You said you had to study. Now the sentence. She is beautiful fall. She is beautiful a statement, but here you have a different meaning, but has no brain. How can you suggest that meaning? How can you? So, using the fall rise, using a fall rise, we can suggest that meaning. How to? What is the tone? She is beautiful. She is beautiful. She is beautiful. So, that is a tone for rice, but has no brain. She is beautiful. She is beautiful. Okay. So, that is a tone for rice. For rice. So, the tone, please practice the tone. I saw you at the theatre. I saw you at the theatre. Second, she is beautiful. She is beautiful. Okay. So, that is a tone. So, the tone conveys some hidden meaning that is not verbally expressed, conveys some special meaning that is not verbally expressed. So, we use this tone to convey some special meaning. So, that is fall rise. Now, finally, rise rise fall the rise fall 
and we represent the tone this way. First it rises and then it falls, fall rise. This is the so this is the rise fall. First it rises and then it falls, rise fall. Okay. Now context example. With suspicion, ask this question with suspicion. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Sure? Are you sure? This is the rise fall. Are you sure? Then again, with sarcasm. Sarcastically, say with sarcasm or sarcastically, how interesting. You said grammar is very interesting, how interesting, how interesting, see that tone, how interesting, that is the tone. Got it? So, are you sure? Are you sure? Then, how interesting. So, that is the rise fall. So, these are the four major tones in English. Can you try to remember? First one, fall. Second one, rise. Third one, fall rise. And the fourth one, rise fall. So, which are the contours where we use the falling tone? Ordinary statements without any implication, implication without any special meaning, ordinary statements. Two, for questions, what kind of questions? Yes, no and w h questions asked in a neutral way, yes, no and w h questions asked in a neutral way. Now, three, the third contest that is angry orders or commands. Fourth contest, exclamations suggesting involvement. So, these are the contests where we use the falling tone, falling tone. Then the rising tone, which are the contests where we use the rising tone? One for incomplete utterances. We use the for we use the rising tone. Then for questions yes, no and w h questions asked in a warm friendly way, we use the tone. And then for polite requests and pleasant invitations also, we use the rising tone. And then fall rise and rise fall, we use these tones to convey some special meaning, some hidden meaning that is not verbally expressed. Okay. So, these are the major tones and these are the contests where we use this tone. All right. Now, I think we shall work out a few sentences. First one, I am going to Mumbai. So, how to say I am going to Mumbai? What kind of sentence? Statements. So, which tone will you use? Fall. So, how to say I am going to Mumbai? I am going to Mumbai. I am going to Mumbai. Please transcribe I am Okay. Again, a statement. So, the tone to be used for and we say today to follow on the second syllable. 
So it's very hot today. Say the sentence. It's very hot today. It's very hot today. Today. Transcribe. It's. It's very hot today. Okay. So both were statements. So we use the following tone. Now the next one. Is father at home? Question. Yes, no question. And normally I told you, normally we have to ask questions in a warm, friendly way. And which tone? So which tone will you use? the rise. So, is father at home? Is father at home? Okay. Please transcribe. Is father at home? Is father at home? Say the sentence with proper tone. Is father at home? Is father at home? Okay. Fourth one. Yes, again question, yes, no question. So, which tone will you use? The rise. Are you dreaming? 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 Say the question. Are you dreaming? So, rise. Are you dreaming? Just one more. See, the coffee was good, but the service was awful. So, you got the meaning? So, which tone will you use? Remember? So, you at the theater, the coffee was good, the coffee was good. Suggest, you know, some special meaning, but the service was awful. Now, use the tone, the coffee was good. The coffee was good. So, this is the tone for rice, just to convey a special meaning. Okay. So, this is how we use these tones in various contexts. Okay. You remember, we have been discussing the things to pay special attention to when we speak a language like English. What was the first point, first thing? you have to be careful about. We should take care to pronounce words correctly. We have seen how to accent words, how to pronounce words correctly. We also discuss the conventions and pronunciation. Second point was, you know, we should take care to stress words and sentences correctly and also we should use the right tone. We have seen both word stress and sentence stress and also the tones, the major tones and also the various contexts in which we have to use these tones. Okay? So, with this I think we shall wind up today's session and we shall continue in our next class.